We are here at TFK Total Fitness Kickboxing. Hit the gym harder. We're here today with Daverell Williamson on uh, Between the Gloves. Hey, thanks for being here. You know, Ken, thank you so much for being here. I couldn't find a more befitting uh, program to be a part of when you say be Between the Gloves. There's so many different things that you think of when you say Between the Gloves. Um, you know, you can talk about medical field, uh, the hospital, uh, just different things that, that happen with gloves on. And then we had this terrible virus with the COVID-19 that's been out here for the last two years. Um, you know, wearing gloves for just about everything, gloves, masks, uh, face masks, you know, a little bit of everything. So between the gloves is, you know, it has a lot more meaning to it than it ever has been in my life. Well, I appreciate you being here. And uh, DeVarrell is uh, not only a good friend of mine, but also a Hall of Famer boxer, heavyweight boxer. And so it is, uh, you know, something that I'm totally looking forward to today, just to have you on here, chat about uh, your life, about your accomplishments, and uh, – if you, if you have met DeVarrell at all, you know that this guy is nothing but inspiration, nothing but hype, nothing but, man, he, <laughs> this is the guy that got me in real shape. I thought I was in shape years ago. No, I met DeVarrell. I started going to his hole in the wall gym at the time. And I came out of there a couple months later in the best shape of my life. Okay. So Year, you know, years later, here we, I have a podcast and uh, a gym, and he has a gym that is unbelievable and uh, a great following. He's about to be inducted into the Colorado Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame, on March? May. May. May 4th. May 4th. Wednesday night's a school night, baby. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, 2022, so... It's a it's a big deal, Ken. Uh, when you are awarded something or you're you're presented something, you embrace it with with both arms and both feet. However, you you take a peek around the corner and to take it to say, hey, you know, a little bit more of the history of it. Uh, some of the other people who have been involved in this, you know, uh, before you, um, and I am the third boxer since 1965 to be inducted into the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. It's, it's, it's a big deal. What an honor. It's a big deal. It's a, yeah. Well, it's befitting. I'm telling you. The, uh, the, 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 your history, as I'm reading your bio, man, it's incredible. So let's, uh, I want to I go to that real quick uh, just to interrupt you a little bit more. Um, here we go. So, you 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 were uh, you were raised in Washington D.C., right? Yeah, born and raised, yes. Born sir. and raised Washington D.C. and uh, not the not the best circumstances. It sounds like you were um, in a in a in a poverty stricken. I'm reading your thing here. It, it, poverty stricken Washington D.C. and I uh, spent uh, your childhood in a uh, in foster care. A lot, a lot of years in foster care, is that? Yeah, my first years from, from infancy until I was nine years old, I was in a foster care uh, with uh, a family, uh, William and um, Dorothy Addison, Dot and Bill. Um, they had two kids. They had Sarah and they had Wilhelmina. And then there was another, uh, there, was another there were two other kids there in the family, Clarence and Clarice uh, Addison. I mean, Clarence and Clarice Thompson. Uh, probably now Addison probably changed the name. And so my sister and I, Demetria and DeVero, Clarence and Clarice, and then they had Sarah and Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina being the baby of, 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 of us all. Uh, and they were a couple years apart. And so we were part of that. And, you know, growing up, sometimes you're in an environment and you don't really look and see outside of that particular environment, whether you're well-to-do, whether you're poverty-stricken, whether you're middle class, you're kind of around the same people all the time. So you're in the same school programs, not until you go outside of those lines to kind of see that there's a lot of 
differentiate them. There's a lot of differences. What I, what I mean by that is that being there, uh, the foster home, I thought, you know, this is this my home. It's my normal. mom and my dad. My mom and my dad. And so it took me so much longer when leaving the foster home after nine years <clears throat> to call my mother mom instead of Connie because her name is Constance and Connie is short for Constance. And to call my father dad, but I think I never called him dad. I would introduce him as my dad, but I would always call him pa. And so that was one of the things that I would call my father, Pa, hey, Pa, uh, you know, Pa this, Pa that. But uh, it, but I would introduce him to you, to him, say, hey, this is my dad. Hey, Ken, this is my dad. But when I talk to him, I say, Pa, you know, can I go here? Can I go here? Ask for, you know, uh, permission to do, you know, things or be a part of different things. Yeah, wow. You know, you, you just, you, if that's all you know, that's all you know. And, yeah, that's got to be... Uh, you know, looking back, kind of surreal, but, you know, so, okay, so in, being in that environment, you uh, all of a sudden found a, uh, somebody came into your life that kind of took you under their wing and, and helped you kind of pull out of that. Is that, is that who we're talking about right here? My, my dad? Yeah, like who, who, yeah. who inspired you to, to start the, like, because we were just talking about your high school career where you just all of a sudden were like into everything. Let me take you back a little bit. Okay. Okay. To my best of my knowledge, I was born in a prison, which is Washington, D.C. jail, which is their hospital, D.C. General Hospital. <clears throat> my sister and I, Demetria, we're going back and forth about where the facts were, where we were. She said, well, my mom wasn't locked up. I don't know if she was locked up or we had the baby because the jail was so close to the hospital, what the situation was. So we, because I'm trying to write a book, I'm trying to get, you know, in my words, in my eyes of what I remember, not necessarily, you know, but you have to listen to your aunts and uncles, but those same people who left me in the false home. So how, how credible are they? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like you had a chance to, my mother said that everybody had a chance to take us, but they said no, they want to teach her a lesson for doing drugs. At any rate, you look around and you say, hey, you no, know, they're in that same ice cream truck, or we're in the same grocery store, so we're kind of all the same. It's not until you leave that area and leave Washington, D.C. in 1987, uh, 88, going to Minnesota, I'm looking back into Washington, D.C. saying, oh, God, it's like they put so many people in a cereal box. That's what I feel like, and they just stacked them up. And so that's where the conflict, the drugs, the, uh, the uh, tension come in. I mean, people just stacked on top of each other. But as a young kid, you think that that's the way everybody else living in Minnesota or Nebraska or Arizona or all the different places I've been. You, and not until you get there, you say, oh God, they don't look like that, they don't look like that at all. We, we, but you make the adjustments and let's say, for example, as a kid, his left foot hurt. He'll compensate for that left foot and play kickball or, you know, tag as he is a normal kid or, you know, a normal person, but that, that leg still bothers him. And I, I guess I, I guess I want to say I compensated because that's what I was accustomed to. That's what I was used to, Ken, is, is everybody around my neighborhood, you know, kind of looked like me and did kind of same things and ate the same restaurants or the same food places, eateries, <clears throat> same school programs or aftercare programs. So I was a part of that. You were um, a survivor. Survivor. Yeah. Survivor. So, okay. So um, then you got into high school. We were just talking about this just a few minutes ago. You got into high school and you were like all of a sudden, hey, you know what? I'm going to do everything. I mean, you were what? You played football. You played basketball. You were a cheerleader. Not in high school, in college. Oh, in college. In okay, high okay. school, I, I played football and basketball. In community college, I played football and basketball, and I ran track. In college, I played football and basketball. I did everything uh, in Wayne, Nebraska, Wayne State College. I was a mascot. I was a, excuse me, not cheerleader, but we like to say Yale squad. I was a part of the Yale squad. Uh -huh. um, uh, uh, I was uh, in the the one act plays, the children plays that came in the spring for the kids to come from the elementary schools and middle schools. I was a part of that. I was part of the intramural program. 
I, I was a part of the African or minority student association. I just, I just poured my heart into the school, the student body, the school, and I am so forever grateful that I did because I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. It's like, if I decide to be here, I want to be here. I don't want to be here, but I'm still looking out the door somewhere else to look at me. I'm just here and I'm happy. Were you good at everything? I think it was pretty good. I certainly was good at football and basketball, and and and, and because the guys, you know, from football guys would say, hey, we're going to become cheerleaders for the basketball team. And after I watched one season of cheerleading, I'm like, I can play football, I can play basketball just as good as these guys. <laughs> and so I went out for the team, and I made the team. You know, so I put the I put the, the Yale squad stuff down, the pom-poms down, and picked up the basketball and played basketball. Okay, so, so when you're doing that, though, you sound like, oh, yeah, I got all the confidence in the world. Is that the case? Because I don't know a lot of kids that are like, yeah, have, you know, oh, I'll do everything. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And I'm going to go do it. They may think it for a minute. Oh, I, I can do that. But they, do they take action? Uh, I think a lot of people don't. So I, I agree with you, and it's just kind of like a different day and age that our parents uh, told us, "Kid, you know, go outside and you know play, and dinner will be ready in such and such time." Uh, so you have two hours to kind of play tag or find games you can do because we didn't really have a lot of money to do a lot of things, so we had to do all these different games. It just you just you just you just get along. You just move along. We all here trying to have fun until this time, you know. It has elapsed for us to go to bed or go to school, I mean, go to school or do homework or whatever we have to do. And sometimes the kids today doesn't see it the same way because they have so many distractions. I think the worst thing they ever made was a cell phone. Hallelujah. It, it, it's the worst thing. <laughs> it's the worst thing. Oh, gosh, it's the yes. worst thing yep. that you ever have, have can invent it is the person who made the cell phone. It's a terrible idea. It's, it, I mean, you have so many negatives from that phone. You know, very little positives besides, hey, mom I'm, or dad, I'm going to call you when I need help or whatever. I guarantee you, for that phone has been out for so many years, that how many positive versus negative things that have occurred with that cell phone. And, you, you know, know we say that as mascots, okay, because, and a lot of my listeners know that I'm a mascot as well. But, yeah, we always get together and say, man, the worst, worst thing that was invented was the cell phone camera. Yeah, that too. Because <laughs> now all we do is take pictures. We can't have, we can't move through a crowd without taking pictures. Now, okay, so we were just talking yesterday, and I and I mentioned this to you just before we started recording here. That I was talking to somebody yesterday that that um, their child um, so good at one sport that they said, "Hey, well, why don't you go out for another sport?" Oh, uh, I'm not good at that. Come on. How do you know? Exactly. <laughs> How do you know until you do it? Yeah. I mean, you can't not tell me that I came into school saying, hey, because I can do a round off back handspring, that I'm qualified to be a chili to hold a girl up going one, two, down, up. But I poured my heart into it. I mean, and, and, and I just say, hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, was I the best chili? I don't know. Was I the worst? No. But I was... I was functional. I mean, I was, I was, I was workable. I mean, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you have a door or you know something in your in your in your, in your house in cabinet. It's a work where it still squeaks, but it's functional. It still works. <laughs> right. I mean, you still gonna keep the place in the place on the glass is not gonna fall out the out the cupboard. It's functional, so we okay. You know what I mean, and I think that's kind of who I am and what what I've been. You know, a jack of all trades, but a, but a master of none. And until boxing came along, you know that. Don't, I'm hearing that, that I'm I'm one of the few that I'm one of the few the, the best who's ever done this in this particular position in this particular weight class in this particular time, and so I am so grateful for those experiences. Um, you know, to play basketball, to play football in Washington D.C. at the highest level, the highest level is like wow, and then to you know to 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 go into college and play at a community college in Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota. So it wasn't that competitive, but you have different people come from Minnesota, Chicago, Milwaukee, all kind of like the melting pot. So you get a little bit of talent there. Um, 
and then you get a chance to transfer and, and go over to Wayne, Nebraska, Wayne State College, in Wayne, Nebraska, and then you have people from you know that, that those surrounding areas, you know, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, you know, Iowa, some of their best talents, and, and, and I don't know, you just, you know, I'm just grateful uh, for my experiences. I, you know, I, I, I really am, Kim. Ken, I'm really uh, grateful well, for. You've been very blessed. Uh, you know, and again. You know, I, I want to, you know, just, you know, kind of embrace those, those blessings, those, those opportunities, and this is kind of how you see it. You know, you know it may be five of you out there uh, in the locker room or in the lunchroom, you know what I mean, because we're all probably in the lunchroom trying to figure out, okay, we're going to get together, we're going to get a skit together for the talent show. We're gonna get something together for um, the uh, the lip sync contest. We're gonna do something for, I mean, and you just like you just pour your heart into wherever you are. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here because I want to be here, and I'm here because I belong here. Yeah. And whatever it is, you got to put your heart and soul into whatever you do. Today's episode is sponsored by Cool Properties. If you're headed to Las Vegas for a family or corporate outing and want a different experience. If you want to avoid the crowds, traffic, and chaos, you know what I'm talking about. Check out Cool Properties in Mesquite, Nevada, about an hour and a half outside Las Vegas. They offer a variety of property rentals, just minutes away from two world-class golf courses and luxury resorts. Full access to pools, hot tubs, gyms, and they are all located at the clubhouse. Bring the family, or not, rest easy with Cool Properties. Click the link below for more details. I I absolutely agree. You know what? You mentioned boxing here, so let's get let's 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 move to this here real quick. So it's I, I want to read some stuff. I want to read some of your bio here because and, and, and listen up to this. This is an amazing. I there's just so much here. So a member of the Golden Gloves Hall of Fame. Um, Golden Gloves champion in 1996, 1997. Uh, United- 96, 99. Oh, sorry, sorry. 96, 99. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm skipping down a line halfway with my eyes here. Um, and amateur heavyweight champion in 1996, 97, and 98, becoming the first and only heavyweight to win three times in a row. Amazing. Total of 10-time national amateur boxing champion. In 1997, you were honored as the nation's best amateur boxer. Uh, In October 1998, uh, you were named the USOC's Olympic Athlete of the Month. Uh, The list goes on here. Um, Uh, A.K.A. Mr. October. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, as an amateur uh, uh, Williamson compiled an impressive record of 120 wins 17 losses and one draw with 103 wins 103 wins coming by knockout his powerful right hand earned him the nickname touch asleep and that's how I met him (laughs) <laughs> That's all I do at first, touch of sleep. And so um, now made your professional debut uh, at the age of 32. In 2000, he went on to win 27 times as a pro, 23 by knockout while losing only eight times. 13 years after his debut, Ring Magazine called Williamson the hardest puncher in the world. I hope that's I hope. I want to underline that. Uh, Over his pro career, he earned title shots on four separate occasions, claiming the WBC NABF slash WBO Latino heavyweight title and the WBC Continental Americas WBO NABO heavyweight title along the way. Among his most notable fights, or wins over Oliver McCall and Derek Jefferson at Madison Square Garden, and losses to 
Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko. <laughs> Glad you said that first. I want to make sure I had that right. At Caesar's Palace and Kali Meehan at Madison Square Garden. Man, the list goes on here. Let's see. His, fight, his final fight as a professional took place in 2014 at the age of 46. So, I was there at Madison Square Garden for one of those. That was, wow. that was amazing, amazing, amazing. The, uh, yeah, that day my hero entered the ring, I gotta say. I, I cannot imagine going into a ring one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, I own a kickboxing gym, but I am not stepping in a ring. I'll be honest with you. One time, uh, <laughs> DeVarel at his gym put me in to spar with this young kid. He was like 15 years old. I had lasted like a half a round with this kid. After I punched him one time, I got him a good cross, boom. But then he, uh, he gave me a nice little jab to the face and bloodied my nose and left some skin on my teeth and everything. And I, I walked out there, I was like, yeah, that is it for my fighting career right there. I don't know how anybody can step in the ring. So I have props to everybody that does that. Uh, boxing is a completely different sport than I ever experienced. And DeVarel taught me that. Uh, even though I'm not a fighter, he taught me that this is such a, not just a physical sport, it's a mental sport. I never knew how exhausted I could be mentally after coming out of one of his workouts. So, you know, he, it, 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 he taught me how to um, follow your punch with, a, you know, with moving, what direction to move, and uh, the thought processes behind each movement each punch and um, so hey I have mad props with all that being said what are some of your favorite moments you know uh, Ken some of, my, <clears throat> some of my favorite moments I know you're gonna you know probably raise your eyes but was uh, working with you in the boxing um, gym in the tortilla factory where we were you know, some 15 17 years ago it, it, it was it was fun because to see how athletic you are to see the things you're able to do in terms of like the pull-ups the push-ups the uh just different little things you have to do on one leg and right leg and trying to keep your balance as it pertains to boxing but how athletic you are and how just um of a friendship uh of you and i having conversations over the years uh about how we looked at each other and you said man some people don't get it and you said that Devero, you get it. You get it in terms of you get it with people. You get the understanding the business part. I mean, you get the relationships. You get it. And it's a certain, like je ne sais quoi, it's a certain knack that you have to have to be, to be special, to be special into your own little category. And you have that, and you, it's very kind of you to look at me as I, I had it, I have it, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just so uh, grateful to to call you a friend, but also for you to like look at me and say, hey, you know, some of the things in life that you know just people kind of overseas, oversee, and you felt like that I paid attention to the little things that had made me who I am, and that's with boxing, that's with life, that's with sports, that's just with you know just communication, and that that that, that resonated with me some 17 years ago and i'm not sure if you remember having a conversation with me over the years and, oh, yeah. and uh it, it just it just it's, it's really cool of uh of how not just talented but successful you've been watching you uh do your magic your magic tricks you know every night or over uh season in season out and it never got old it never got old i was just speaking to your son uh, about just before we came on the air about like what is one of my favorite um, skits or stunts that seeing you doing? And, oh, well, it's the half court shot. No, it wasn't that, although that was awesome. <laughs> uh, it was every holiday season for Christmas, the this, this Christmas season, it's the nutcracker play. Oh my God. <laughs> 
I'm going to see the Nutcracker. Is it time yet? Is it time yet to do something? Because, you know, like I had season tickets. So I don't want to give somebody a ticket away that is doing the Nutcracker time. I'm going to be crazy. I don't care who they're playing. I want to be there to see that. So hey, I'm dying laughing. You know, when you're a season ticket holder, you know, you know at that time, some you know, 17 years ago, whatever it was, it's it, it just so cool. And I didn't want to give each season, I didn't want to give those tickets away because you want to share share the wealth, you know, because you feel good, you know, your, your neighbors, your friends. But no, nah, no, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm coming to that. I want to see that. So <laughs> it, it, it's cool. And, you know, it, it's cool that, uh, that at the time, you know, my two younger kids uh, were were so, you know, like, like so crazy about you that they want to dipping the ice cream dipping dots and they want to see Rocky. They can't <laughs> they can't nothing about who Carmelo Anthony was at the time. They can't nothing about who Kenya Martin was or all those people who did some amazing things on the on the court. But I mean, uh, uh, so that, that 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 was cool to uh, to see you in your in your world in your in your space and how you you know electrified the audience and, and you know my kids and I um, all the same well I appreciate that and it you know what it all comes down to like sounds like we've we've kind of helped raise each other's kids because I got my boys all have signed gloves that they still have by Devera Williamson TOS touch of sleep and uh, you know my boys still look up to you so and, and, and by the way my boys would be they'd be there a lot at the gym getting going through these workouts and everything. I even brought, I even brought family members to some of those workouts. Yes. Oh, they were over <laughs> every time they were over there puking in the corner in the trash can. But you know, I had, I was never in better shape in my whole life. And, uh, so those were good times. We had good, uh, good workouts and good conversations and, uh, got to be good friends, but you know, okay. So, uh, with, with, with all this, boxing and everything you have also been and, and, and not just influencing me and, and my family but you have uh gone on to to do such great things in the community and uh you know not just a uh he's not just getting um inducted into the colorado sports hall of fame for just his his achievements in that area but he's also um a great person in the community that you know we had the, the Inglewood schools programs you know it's I don't know, seven eight years ago we, uh, we got together with uh, some of the clients and and we put together an after school program it's called TYP TYP stands for touchstone youth program and right now because uh, we're in Inglewood we look after the Inglewood family the Inglewood schools mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's a big deal because, you know, like my life, I've been raised pretty much after school programs, summer camps, the resident camp, Washington, D.C., the summer camps, the day camps, uh, after school programs. So um, I get it. I get it. The the reduced lunch program, the, the free lunch program, you know, that's me. That's who I am. So I'm going to love on, quite, nat quite naturally, I'm going to reach out to those kids and see if there's something I can do with them. Uh, there's a lady named uh, Miss Jenny Barker from uh, Inglewood Middle School, and she called me. And I thought she's a, as a client just called her the one in my box. She said, you know, she hung up when I answered. I called back and said, hey, were you trying to reach TOS Boxing Gym? And I can hear kids in the background say, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what's going on there? It was a teacher calling from the Inglewood program, the school, the middle school program, and saying, hey, can you come up to our school and be a professional on career on career day be one of the professionals on career day you know share your story about kids you know and what you do as a professional uh running the boxing gym i said absolutely i'm thinking that i'm going to be there maybe an hour hour two an hour two hour and a half you know i'll get a free hot tea or something like that maybe a bagel and you know head on back <laughs> nah can they work me baby they work me <laughs> <laughs> She said, uh, Val, you're going to be in the gymnasium. So I started like at 810. I'm in the gymnasium from 810 to like 310. And every class is 50 minutes. So I got to service 
30 or 40 kids each time for this 50 minutes class. And then, you know what? They have like maybe five minute break. Here comes another. Here comes another 50 kids. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, and this went on all day, but I am so forever grateful because that's the, that was my, my, my pool of talent. I mean, once I, I did this, we just had no, had no idea I would ever put together an after school program. I mean, are you kidding me? This was just something donating my time. When the after school program came about, I, I jumped at it because I always wanted to do it. I, you know, I always wanted to give back to my, my community. Um, when I did that, it went, off, it went over very well. We had different people, different professionals to come in the gym, different doctors, uh, teachers, uh, education people, and they all donated their time to these kids for a couple, two hours, okay, on certain days. Now, now these, these, these kids, I've, we've done this program for uh, seven years now, but in the third year, the school figured out who I was, what I've done, what I've accomplished, and says, hey, we want to do more with DeVarrell Williamson. So they probably Googled me, looked me up, did this, all kinds of stuff, and said, hey, there is something special about this guy, and they're now doing the program. You know, three years into the program, they're doing it during school hours. So you know how many desks that I had to cross that says, hey, DeVarrell Williamson is doing a school program for boxing, for fitness, for kids in the Inglewood schools. So I'm doing Charles Hay Elementary. I'm doing Inglewood Middle School. Inglewood Middle School has two schools. Uh, I'm like, I am so proud. I mean, if my mother and father were alive, especially, you know, my dad and his friends to say, hey, look who's doing it. Look who's doing it. Look who's here. I mean, he's, you know, my son is giving back and we're, you know, in the ring with all a bunch of kids taking a picture around. I mean, like, it's so beautiful to be able to have that where these kids are like, you know, kind of scared to death of you, but, but, they, but they're loving on you because, you know, we're, we're you know, we're, we're, we're bridging the gap and, and, it, and, it, and it's a beautiful relationship that to have touched on you program and the Inglewood School program. Um, it's, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't be prouder or happier uh, about what we, 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 we built. That's awesome. I mean, really, to be affecting people like you have. I mean, just think how this is gonna grow. Just think of the, I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, if you're reaching five kids, you know, if you're reaching one, from there, what, fitness, lifestyle, um, uh, thinking larger than life, if you have one, two, five, ten kids that can spread that, you know, down the line, Oh my gosh, you know, what a difference you're going to make in this world. Or already, I mean, you, you've already made a difference in this world. I mean, absolutely. But, you know, on a different level now, man, I have mad, mad props for you. That's and that is just It's just amazing. And, and I love that you've approached this as in, hey, how can I help? And not saying, ah, this is who I am, this is what I've done. And, you know, that just tells you what kind of person, touch of sleep, DeVarrell Williamson is. Because he's, he's just a humble guy that just has an effect on people. So um, I also want to uh, tell everybody about your gym just a little bit. You have a, um, you have a, a boxing gym. No, no, we have a boxing gym. Uh, we have a nonprofit program, the TYP Touchstone Youth Program, uh, and it's in Inglewood, uh, 3910 South Calumet Street. The major car streets are Santa Fe and, and Oxford. Santa Fe and Oxford is really, really close, maybe 600 meters from the Inglewood Rec Center. And we are building a relationship with those guys as well. Um, uh, my wife uh, and I went over and uh, we tried to, uh, we're trying to bridge the gap because of boxing, because they don't really have a boxing program there. They have a basketball court, basketball games, they have swimming pool. and we're ball say, courts. Yeah, and we say, hey, <laughs> we, we, wanna, we, wanna be a, we wanna be a part. We're good for each other, and we're just now uh, creating a relationship with those guys, and, and I think it's, it's very good. Um, we, we wanna start, and we gotta get some things down on paper, because as we get them approaching for the summertime, so we wanna, Start it now and get it ready so that as the summertime comes, it's, it's kind of in full swing. With, you know, sometimes you start up something and you still have a couple of nicks and glitches. So hopefully by the time 
June comes around, we have some, it's, it's like foolproof. I mean, it's, it's, it's good to go, and, and, and the kids can utilize it and be utilized on both ways, both ways. Um, we have a, a revolving door. It's not a door that comes open and closed. You know, revolve, and you, know, you, you go out of it, you come back in on another time, and we get that. We get that life gets in the way that vacations, summer camps, programs, anything that, you know, that happens you know, during the summertime that, but we still want to be there for you when you when you come back from vacation, when you come back from whatever it is you're involved in. Right. Well, that's it's a great program, sounds like. And you've got, I mean, because people are, uh, you know, <laughs> I've found that with, you know, with our gym, yeah, you got some people that uh, come in strong. Uh, life happens. They, they're they gone for a little bit or they come in, you know, less less often. And then, you know. But to have a program like that, that really, uh, you know, I'm sure is beneficial too. Now, you're also training boxers. Absolutely. If you're serious about boxing, man, your gym is the place to go. I, 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 I think so, Ken. Uh, I think, that, you know, we've really, you know, I'm not sure how this is going to come out. I've had a number of young men that come around. Uh, when I say young men, I mean like, 27, 28, 30, 32, 33, and they're they wanting to start boxing. And because I turned pro 25 days before my 32nd birthday, I am encouraging them. But they don't understand what I put into it. They think I just started and, and I always say, hey, okay, I started, I said, look at me, look at 30, I'm 32, look at all the things I've accomplished. And I started at 32. But he's not seeing all the work I put into it mm -hmm. before then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What I've really made, you know, like I told you that when I go into Wayne State, I poured my heart into it. I poured my heart into Rochester. I poured my heart into, you know, to Northern Michigan where I went to grad school. I poured my heart into what I was doing. Wait, I, so you, you're telling me that stuff just doesn't happen overnight? No. Like, like this, I mean, wait, so you just can't like order this on, you know, online? You just doesn't, I mean, no, immediate no. gratification? You can't just, what? No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> And although we wish we wish it did, but it's it just that that way you have to really, like you had to really hunker down and say, hey, what it is that I want to do, and just start doing it. Just start it. Just start it. Just start, start something. Peppers. Just start something. Whatever it is, just start. Just head that direction. You know, you, you hear different things. You know, maybe religious beliefs or just spirituality. If I take one step towards, you know, goodness or positivity, that positivity would take two steps towards me. You mean like, hey, you'd be surprised at you're on the side of the road, okay, and I'm out of gas or I got a flat, but I'm trying to push my car and hold a steering wheel at the same time, push my car. You'd be surprised how many people come to help you because they see you out there trying to help yourself. But if you're just sitting in the car, you know, if you're sitting in the car listening to music with your, with your music blasting and you're in, this, you're in a bad situation, someone's going, they're going to drive right by you. Say, man, I hope somebody stop by and help me push the car around the corner or I got a flat. I mean, just start doing it. Just start doing something. I just start it. all the time. Just, just start something. Just start. Just, just do it. And ask for yes. help. Learn. You know, be, be open to learning. Yes. You know, don't be afraid because there's so much out there. There's so much. There's so much in my gym that people have no, they see the sign outside and they're afraid. They see the sign outside, your, they, they'd love to go in. They'd love to check it out, but uh-uh, I'm too afraid, I'm too afraid. If you just take a step, just inside, just, just look inside. And there's so much, and we're not talking, hey, come to my gym, come to you. We're talking about, you know, in anything, you know? I mean, there's, there's so much, I, I learned to skydive. Did I tell you that? Well, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I'm a skydiver now. <laughs> I was scared to death of that. You know what? I was scared to run a marathon. My, I see everybody else running marathons. I hate running. I hate it. I suck at it. I sucked at it before. Now, I'm actually, I, I, I said I'm going to run a marathon. I'm going to do something that, I, that, that frightens me. And let me tell you, man, look, I, I trained for six months for this first marathon. And literally, I thought I was... I, I'd run 20 miles two weeks before and then kind of tapered off. I was, I, I was winging it. I, had never, I didn't even know how to train for this thing, okay? 
I get there and I was, it was early in the morning and I literally had to run off about four times before this race into the bushes because I had to run so bad. <laughs> wow. I had the runs before I ran. So, I mean, it just scared me to death. And um, I, I ran it. I succeeded. I didn't die. And I, I've, ran, I've ran three or four more. I just, I just committed to another one with my son in Detroit. So, I mean, it's these types of things. You can do anything. You can do anything. And you know what? Devero is a perfect example of somebody that is not – uh, 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 shy, not afraid. He's a deep thinker, and he's still after life. He's still after it. I mean, he's accomplished all these things. But man, it, it sounds like you're just getting warmed up, and yeah. you know, you're saying yes to things. Again, say yes to things. I'm telling my family, my boys, my, you know, people around me all the time, say yes, say yes, yes. say know? yes. I mean, and, and, and be a person of your word, a woman of your word, be a man of your word. To say, hey, I'll be there. You know, and I'm hoping that over the years, that if I said I would be here or I'll do this, then I'm, I've been here. And I've been here with, with bells on because I'm a man of my word, but I also enjoy the, I enjoy the, the, the camaraderie, the, the, the building, the team building, the, the, the functions, the outlets, you, the people. You enjoy people. You enjoy yes. getting to know people and, and uh, looking them in the eye. And uh, Sheila, she told me this morning. She's like, I love that guy. He smacked me in the head when I was driving. <laughs> That's the thing that she, no. she she's like, it, you know, I, I wasn't doing this right. You just gave me a little tap upside the head there. It, Come on, it, wake up. Let's go. Sheila, if you listen to this, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a smack of head. It was encouragement. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't want you to look at anything. It was encouragement. I was encouraging you to yes, do a better right. job. Yes, I know yes. you have it in you, Sheila, wherever you if are. You know, I know you have it in you. I, I can see it in your eyes. You had that fire in your eyes. And I was just trying to, to, to motivate you to do a little bit more. And that fight in you, girl. I know you have it. <laughs> and if you know the barrel, you know that that is with a smile on his face. You feel pumped afterwards. And only he can uh, express encouragement that way it's awesome training with the barrel is like it's it's it's, it's an experience and i come away just pumped for life so all right the barrel I, I i appreciate you being here i appreciate you coming on spending your day with me and uh part of your day with me and i'm gonna be there for the induction and i wouldn't miss it i'm grateful for my experience, I'm grateful for the people who, 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 who voted me in. I'm, I'm great. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it was, I won by 10 votes or one vote. I don't care. I am grateful. I'm appreciative. I am, I'm thankful for the entire committee. I am, you know, like sometimes you, um, I, I'll give you an example really quick. I was going into the Hall of Fame for the Golden Gloves Hall of Fame, uh, Colorado Sports Go I mean, Colorado Golden Gloves Hall of Fame back in 2015. And I'm thinking about all the people who went in before me, and I'm kind of like a little bit sassy because I felt like I, I belonged in it you know, years before. But by the time they call your name, all that goes away. It goes away. <laughs> You're like, hey, I'm here. I'm grateful. And this is kind of like a huge deal. Uh, you know, for me and my family, uh, my wife and I, we talk about this. Um, I was uh, big boss man, Tom from uh, Colorado Sports, the head guy, head honcho, gave me, gave me a call and said, DeVero, you know, welcome to the family. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I mean, I must have fell out, I must have fell out of my chair, you know, just in, in emotion and just gratefulness and gratitude. Um, I had to kind of prepare myself and get myself together because I you know I teach boxing. And I was expecting a couple, uh, another client to come in. It was a, a lady and her mom, uh, a young lady and her mom came in. And I was kind of like still teary-eyed. And they was like, no, are you okay? Is your wife okay? Are the kids okay? I was like, the kid's fine. Wife's fine. Everybody's fine. <laughs> Life's I'm good. fine. Life's, Life's good. good. Life's very good. You know, to, to have this, you know, to, to get this kind of call, it, you know, it, it, it was a big deal. Well-deserved honor. And a so, lot of crazy out there, but there's a lot of a lot of good. good, a lot of good happening still. And I'm really, I'm, I'm so happy for you. Genuinely, mm -hmm. I just feel like you deserve it, not only as an athlete, but as a human being. And 
you know, I, I just, again, have mad props. I'm so glad that your name is going to be etched in stone. And yes. Wednesday night at the Hilton Hotel downtown. Come on down. I'm smiling from here. Yeah, I, I, I know my wife is smiling, but I'm, I mean, I, you can't wipe your smile off my face. It's just, you know, it's just, it's, it's a really, I can't wait. it's a really good time. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for, yeah. uh, you know, as I've always been, being certainly appreciative of you and uh, all the the connections and direct connects that you have in this world, this, the whole city of Colorado, how you are you probably are already in the Colorado Hall of Sports Hall of Fame, or you should be, you should be right there as well. So <laughs> no. I, I get you. Know, I, no. I mean, what you've done for the last 20 something years as a mascot, as, as as all the stuff, not just at the games, but all these other things that you do in the community as well. If you've done in the community, how you ride around in that van, I mean, and do all kinds of spokesperson and different things that, that, that you've done uh, with the kids in the community, not just at the Pepsi Center, but, but just in the community as well. So, you know, kudos to you as well for giving, giving a lot of yourself uh, you know, even away from your your three three babies, uh, and they're all all grown up now. But you know, your three babies at the time that you were doing a lot of these things, they were you know really really young, and so you have given a lot of yourself as well. well I appreciate that. My pleasure, my pleasure. Between the gloves, I hope you have me back. Absolutely, and we want you to come back in and do another class sometime cause by popular demand. Done. So uh, I'm telling you, these people have just been astounding me. Scout sauna. Uh huh. All right, you saw it. We got it on camera right here. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody. Peace. Yeah, no, I'm sturdy like a milli rocket. Skin clear, still look young. Andy Miller knocking money in my pocket. Don't call me a money pocket engine, get to rocket. It sound like a thunder rocket. Yeah, I still love my baby even when it's toxic. Crazy like she Britney, but no, she don't shade the knock. No, Russell Wilson, where I get low and stay in the pocket. I get paid and do my day.